Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. I'm in a bit of a rush today. Actually, the Seahawks game is on even as we speak. It's the first quarter. I need to get back home and actually watch this game, so we might be a little more rushed than usual. I've got actually the live update on my phone right now. Cleveland had a very nice first drive. They scored a touchdown. Um, the Seahawks are in scoring position right now. Hopefully they can convert. I'm pretty confident that the Seahawks can take care of Cleveland at home. My only worry being that, you know, we don't have Thomas Rawls anymore. We don't really have a backfield going right now. Thomas Rawls was our backup running back. Now he's injured with a broken ankle out for the year. Hopefully we can take care of the Browns at home and then hopefully Marshawn Lynch can get healthy in time for the playoffs because it looks like we are definitely going to the playoffs. Um, of course, by the time I post this, you guys will probably know whether or not the Seahawks won. So if they do end up losing, try not to crow about it too much in the comments, please. Uh, yeah, I've just been super busy. Usually I try to record the Sunday Smoke on a Saturday so I can have it edited and uploaded in time to um, actually publish on Sunday, but I've just been running around like crazy this weekend, getting ready for the holidays, um, meeting up with a lot of friends who I haven't seen in a while. A lot of people are back in town, including my little brother who lives in Texas now, so I haven't been able to see him much. Um, he got back in town on Friday, so I saw him for a little bit yesterday on Saturday. Great to see the little guy. Well, little guy, he's about my size. Um, still not quite as tall as me, which I love. The older brother can't be beaten in those sorts of things. Even though he played football in high school and actually was recruited to play in college um, and was a large, uh, well, he was in good shape and still is. He still works out and stuff. I still occasionally have to grab him and wrestle him to the ground. Um, just to show that he can't beat his older brother yet. I don't know if he's letting me win or not, but it, for the most part, I'm still able to uh, overpower him. In fact, I wanted to try to get out to the shooting range with him, do a little uh, brotherly bonding over loud bangs and bullets. But again, I have to make sure that I beat him there. I have to, I have to hit that target a lot better than he does. It's, it's this big brother thing, you know? You have to be just a little bit better at everything, which obviously I'm not, but, uh, oh, oh, the Seahawks just scored. Uh, it's seven to seven. Hopefully you guys don't find this too distracting, but I am going to be glancing at my phone every once in a while. You'll just have to bear with me. I'm sorry for a lot of international viewers who don't care at all about American football and a lot of Americans who don't care about football. It's the only sport I really follow. Um, the only sport I actually like watching on television. There are other sports that I will go to games, like going to see a baseball game is fun. It's very, you know, a sense of Americana. There's a nice tradition around that. But watching a baseball game on television, I just find interminably boring. I'm not into that at all. Basketball, I just am not into. It's just so repetitive, back and forth, back and forth, over and over. And the people who play basketball, I mean, it's, it's like this with all professional sports, but especially with basketball, it just seems like the athletes are so freakishly different than normal human beings that it's just like watching aliens play a sport, I guess. And even in football, obviously, you know, you got giant linemen and stuff like that, but it just, it seems a little more grounded. Um, and I don't know, it was the only sport I really, really enjoyed. Well, that's not true, but it was the sport I probably enjoyed playing the most as a kid. Um, so yeah, I follow football. It's the only one I really care about, so I, I do want to watch the game at some point. <coughs> I am smoking in this Sunday Smoke video. A little Dunhill Elizabethan mixture. I've been, you know, a lot of Sunday Smokes recently, I've been smoking tobaccos that I'm going to be reviewing, and I still have some in the queue, things that will be reviewed, such as, um, I think there was the Gawith. Uh, what the heck was it called? Royal Jersey. Wow, went totally blank there for a minute. That Virginia Cavendish blend, that's coming up. There's the King Charles mixture for Gawith coming up. I still have Meat Pie by Drew Estate that I need to um, review at some point. Several other ones that are, are in the queue, tins that I actually have in my possession right now. So those will be coming. 
Um, did not record a tobacco review this week though. This week I recorded the review for this, the Minimum Squared Wallet. So that will be posting probably Tuesday. I want to try to get this up Tuesday just so there's a little time before the holidays for people to watch the video. I know that many of you will probably be busy um, Christmas Eve, Christmas, around that time. So hopefully get that video up. What else is new? Um, went out with some friends last night. I don't go out a hell of a lot these days, but uh, went out and played some pool. That was a lot of fun. There was a time in my life when I was absolutely obsessed with pool and I played probably every single night. Um, there was like a year and a half, maybe two year stretch where I played pool every single night. I loved it and I still really enjoy the game. Um, and as you would expect, if you do something that much, that consistently, I got pretty good at it. And it was so fun to, I don't know, just the, the whole procedure of being in a bar, you own the pool table, you're on the table, people come up and challenge you, they put their quarters down, oh, I've got next game, I've got next game, and, and sort of the, the proper procedure, the, the rules that are sort of unspoken where I'm defending this table, you're allowed to challenge, you call the game, okay, we're doing Vegas rules, we're doing ball in hand, table scratch, all that kind of thing. And then being able to just own that table for an entire night, like nobody can beat you the whole night, that's a, that's a fun feeling. Unfortunately, all the pool groupies were always other men. Women never seemed to be that impressed by the fact that you could play pool well. Whatever. Didn't do too badly last night, but pool is definitely the kind of thing that you have to be constantly practicing. You can't just not play for several years and suddenly pick it up again and be as good as you were in the past. Even if you see the shots, you still have to have that, that fine motor skill practice of knowing, well, even if you know where to, where to put the cue, where to put the cue ball, you have to have that, that, that repetition to be good at it. But it's coming back. It was kind of coming back to me last night. I had a few good runs. It's fun. I love pool. Pool's a great game. I let myself fall behind on the comments this weekend because, like I said, I've been busy and I didn't answer any for a couple days. And my lord, when I got down to it, there was a, a rather daunting queue of comments to answer, but I'm still there. I'm still on top of it. Um, and I think I can continue going. At, at this pace, I'm able to, to stay in front of it for the most part. So for the foreseeable future, I'm still going to be trying to answer every single comment. And some of it, sometimes it's just as simple as saying, thanks for watching. But I still do like acknowledging the fact that people have taken the time to leave a comment. Occasionally the comments are dicky, dickish, showing dickitude, but that's fine. At least, at least it lets me know that you're watching. And for the most part, the comments are always very positive. I guess the other big cultural news is uh, The Force Awakens, Star Wars The Force Awakens, is out in theaters now. I haven't seen it yet. Actually, my siblings and I sort of have a, a Christmas Day movie tradition where every Christmas, Christmas Day we'll go see a film. And so we picked Star Wars as this film, and we weren't... I guess I, I thought there was sort of an unspoken pact that we weren't going to watch the film before we saw it together on Christmas, but I guess my older brother has already seen it. He's way more obsessed with Star Wars than I am. I've always uh, been a fan. I grew up, I was too young to have seen the original movies in the theaters, but from the time I can remember, Star Wars was around. Like, I remember those movies. I remember watching the original trilogy on VHS, well-worn VHS tapes. And uh, so I loved them. Yeah, as a kid, I trying to move things with my mind and doing fake lightsaber duels with my friends and things like that. But I would never say, I wouldn't say that I was ever obsessed with them. And then when the prequel trilogy came out and they were absolute garbage, just pretty much the worst examples, well, maybe not the worst, but just awful examples of filmmaking, um, that sort of killed a little bit of my goodwill towards the Star Wars franchise. I think that's really illust illustrative of the fact that George Lucas, in spite of the fact that he has some good ideas, when it is left up to him to completely auteur something, to be the only voice in the creative process, things don't work out too well, it seems like. The original Star Wars trilogy, he was very young, no one had any faith in him originally because he hadn't done anything yet, 
And so he had these ideas and he was forced to collaborate with people more. This is a, a little mini Star Wars rant. I don't know where this is going to come from, but he was forced to collaborate and he had other people sort of keeping him honest. Because if you look at some of the production notes and things from the original trilogy, he had some pretty stupid ideas. And if things had gone exactly as he wanted them to go, those original movies would have been, I think, much poorer than they turned out to be. But when you're collaborating with Lawrence Kasdan and Kirshner and people like that, who were able to take his ideas and build on them, it, they turned out much better than I think they would have if they had just sprung fully formed from George Lucas's mind. And when you see what happened with the prequel trilogy, where he did have complete control, just surrounded by yes men, people whose only job was to implement his decisions and never question his decisions, you see what happens. You get that frickin' little, what is that kid's name? Jake Lloyd, the little bullheaded weirdo who played the young Anakin. Who would cast that? You would imagine thousands and thousands of children. You have your pick of any child in the world who can play the young Anakin Skywalker, and you pick that little freak. No offense to the young Jake Lloyd, but he's a horrible actor. He's awful. And I could just imagining George Lucas sitting in some sort of, sc or watching screen tests or something, all these different audition footage, and being like, oh yeah, yeah, that kid. That's my Anakin. I like that one. It just I just don't understand how you could make that decision. And then Hayden Christensen as the older Anakin Skywalker. He was so horrible. The most wooden, awful actor I've ever noticed I've ever seen in my life. And of course, some of that has to do with just the fact that George Lucas just can't seem to direct actors. He's not really good at that. He's good at directing uh, special effects, I suppose, setting up set pieces and things like that, but he's not an actor's director. And when everyone's acting in front of a green screen, too, it's not going to bring out the best. But anyway, just the whole concept of those prequel movies was just horribly... It, it was a bad concept, horribly executed, and I kind of wish they had never been made. It's sort of the way I feel about the fourth Indiana Jones movie. I've never seen it, and I pretty much just pretend it doesn't exist. To me, there are three Indiana Jones films. They were great, even, you know, in spite of some of the flaws in uh, the second and third film. But the fourth one doesn't exist just doesn't exist. So I'm hoping, my only hope for The Force Awakens, and I'm trying to avoid spoilers, and I hope you guys in the comments don't spoil anything for me. I'm not really reading reviews or anything. I'm assuming that J.J. Abrams will have a very workmanlike approach to this. It's going to be entertaining. There'll be some cool set pieces. I'm not expecting anything groundbreaking, um, but I would assume that it would be a very the franchise is in capable hands because Disney has billions of dollars invested in this. So they're going to make a very easily digestible, palatable movie. It's not going to be, I don't know, testing the bounds of cinema or anything, but I'm sure it'll be enjoyable. And when you think about it, if you look at the original trilogy through an adult's eyes and try to take away all the nostalgia, there are definitely some things in those first movies. Um, I mean, Empire Strikes Back is... Strikes Back is great. It's just a great film. But even by the time you get to Return of the Jedi, the, the Ewoks, and what, what the hell's going on there? These little furry monkey bear creatures are destroying the Imperial... Uh, they're attacking fully armored Imperial stormtroopers who are armed with laser rifles, and they have sticks and clubs, and they're able to defeat them. It's just ridiculous. Um, oh, and the special editions. Oh, my God. Yeah, see, that's what George Lucas... Those are his ideas. Those are things that he likes to do inserting a ridiculous song and dance number into the Return of the Jedi with like, oh, I can't even, I won't watch the special editions either. Now we got into the Star Wars rant. You think about like Indiana Jones, I would say Raiders of the Lost Ark is, is the perfect action movie or adventure movie. It is so perfectly paced perfectly acted, perfectly plotted. Every, it, it's an amazing film. It's perfect in every single way. But that, again, was George Lucas collaborating with someone. He collaborated with, well, he had, I can't remember who wrote the screenplay. It was, this, what's his name? Wrote some of the Lethal Weapons movies, I think. But George Lucas didn't write the screenplay. Someone else did. And then it was Steven Spielberg who directed it. Lucas came up with the story, basically, and the characters. That's what he's good at, or what he used to be good at. I think it's kind of funny that he had all these notes and ideas for the new movies um, once Disney had purchased the rights, and they didn't want anything to do with him. It's like, hey, you know, I've got some good ideas for a, a direction for this story. I think maybe you could... And they're like, no, thanks, George. Thanks. Not interested. Thank you, but no thank you. Let's 
see me taking a sneaky glance at my phone here. It looks like the score is til still tied at 7-7. Seven to seven. Seahawks have the ball. Um, what down is it? I don't know, but I can't keep watching the game on my phone, and it's not even watching the game. It's a live stream. It just shows updates of the score. So I need to get home. I need to watch this game. I'm going to uh, try to edit this video ASAP, get it posted, so you will have this at the normal Sunday smoke time. But for now, I think we must end. If I don't see you before the holidays, I should be recording another video. Well, the review for the Minimum Squared Wallet will be out this week, but I don't know if I'm going to be recording anything before Christmas. So if I don't see you before then, Merry Christmas. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy spending time with your families. Um, and I will be doing the same. And hopefully, I, we'll still have the normal amount of videos posted. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to have any sort of special Christmas video or anything like that. But we'll see. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Sunday Smoke. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.